Leo. Welcome to a special reading, which I am calling the Green Light Portal reading, looking at uh, the astrological kind of yes from the universe, green light period where most of the plants are direct and maybe things are easier to manifest. And this is from mid-November until late January of 2021. And just looking at it from a tarot point of view and comparing it to earlier in the year. So I'm just going to lay out the cards and I will elaborate as I, after I've done this. So I'm picking two cards to represent um, from, you know, before that mid-November period, and and we're going to also, I'm getting the rest of these cards because I'm going to just dole out some cards for the past as well as the upcoming few months. And these cards are just meant to look at certain things that may have occurred or certain lessons that you learned um, in the past and what you can look forward to in the future. Now, I don't know how many people, um, you know, how you feel about tarot readings. If you're somebody who takes it really seriously or you just enjoy it, it's kind of like ASMR, relaxing, listening to somebody talk about these things and it's not necessarily that serious to you. But, um, I like to look at synchronicity and, and, but by the same token, see the universal aspect of it, that you can take any cards and kind of mold it into something that is relevant for you. So, um, what else did I want to say? I think those are the only cards that I pick for this because I created the spread the other day, kind of on the fly. Okay. So from... I think we kind of measure 2020 from March when we began the shutdown. And I'm speaking for myself in the, United, in the Midwestern United States. I don't know if all parts of the world um, had, you know, experienced the same timeline. But, you know, when I look at something from January and February, I think, wow, you know, little did I know. If I'm reading a comment that I made, you know, in that time frame or just anything, I think, wow, well did I know that in a few weeks everything would totally change. So I'm really talking about from March until right now. Well, actually, as I record this, it's early October. And I believe, you know, we have a Mars retrograde. We, we're going to have a Mercury retrograde in mid-October. Uh, that will last until the, you know, uh, November 3rd and the Mars, Mars goes direct around November 13th. So that's right before the new moon in Scorpio. So when the new moon in Scorpio hits, and I think that's November 15th, we're going, going to be going forward, moving forward, and having all the plants direct except for Uranus. And Uranus will go direct in mid-January, but Uranus is an outer planet. Um, so the two cards in the middle are kind of the main focus, kind of summing up the influence. And for the past position, Leo, you have the King of Swords. And this indicates somebody that you have, you've had to um, maybe become super duper detached about someone or something in your life. And usually, I mean, more times than not, I would think it would be a person. And because Leo is a fire sign, there is passion, emotion that you have and you also are a fixed sign so you tend to be very uh, steadfast in your devotion to a person and perhaps this is somebody that has broken your heart over and over again 
I have a card, the chariot, that's like cancer. So I don't know if it's a cancer person. But I mean, this could even be like um, mourning the loss of somebody who has passed away. Now, remember, this is the past. So you would know what this loss was. Well, let me get to that card. This is mourning the loss of someone or something. And um, I could even see like an addiction that you had to just kind of like, because I, 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 you know, a really great book on alcoholism, if that interests you, is by a woman who has passed away um, years ago, I think. And it's called Drinking a Love Story. So if you're interested, it's a memoir about a woman who I believe she was a writer because she's <laughs> she's a great writer. And I think she was even doing then, but how she got involved in um, addictive drinking and how she, you know, and, and the sobering up process. I think she ended up dying of lung cancer or something. I can't remember. But she also had anorexia and she wrote a book on that, on eating disorders, I think. I'd like to read that just because her writing is so good. But yeah, she ended up passing away at a pretty young age. I don't know how old she was. Um, and I could see like, you know, with, if this is like an addiction, it's like mourning the loss of this thing that you used to help you get through life. Um, you know, sometimes they say with the cups, it can be alcoholism for instance, but obviously, um, there are all kinds of other things that people use as, um, numbing agents or diversionary devices, escapism. Um, this can be, you know, obviously the loss of a person through divorce, through, um, you know, through, through death, but the, the king can also be the father. And, and if the father, if you have realized that your father is never going to give you what you're looking for, that could be a loss that you've had to kind of accept. And what I mean by that is the king of swords is very emotionally remote. And so if this is somebody in your life and is not a facet of you, Leo, then th that might have been the hard, the bitter pill to swallow in 2020 is realizing that this person, perhaps they're a narcissist. I often talk about the kings and queens. Sometimes I view them as narcissists because they represent authority figures and authority figures uh, can become authority figures because they crave power and this is a worldly way to get power is through being a parent through being a boss or a supervisor or whatever you want to call it um so you may like you may have um been in denial over a father who you felt was very um, stingy with praise, maybe was, you know, quite emotionally distant, but you're always hoping that something would change and you finally are beginning to mourn the loss of what never will be uh, because you're, you know, something may have happened which kind of sealed the deal and made you realize exactly what this person was like. This could be a partner uh, maybe the father of your child and or a boss that you try to please and you never succeed. And yeah, so we have the chariot here. So this is a card of success. And this is success in spite of all the distractions going on. But you know, this is a card connected to cancer. So maybe that gives a hint of the person in your life who's a cancer who, you know, um, is this person now that would be kind of interesting because usually cancers are a lot more emotional than a king of swords type of person but in any case um mourning the loss of the dream that this person could be that um you know perfect spouse significant other and they just are not that um, you know, sometimes this doesn't mean that you are, you have left the person or that you're planning to leave that person. 
you just might have to reduce your expectations. Maybe you're the one who is being unrealistic and you're expecting too much from somebody who simply cannot give you what you want, but they've never really hidden that fact. And it's always been you who have tried to get them to, to change instead of uh, accepting them as they are, whatever that is. And then we have here the Queen of Wands. And this may have been you becoming much more um, assertive. I, hard to imagine a Leo who is reticent, but they do exist, especially if you have a lot of inner plants and cancer. Uh, or even uh, Virgo, you might be a little bit more understated. Um and your, and your uh, moon and your rising sign can be any sign. So you might be Pisces or you might, you know, be a sign that is more, um, you know, it is not as sure of themselves as I associate with Leo. But the bottom line is that success may have shown you that you have what it takes. And that may make you go after what you want that much more instead of being um, insecure about it and, and, you know, kind of second guessing yourself. So let's look at the period that has like a lot of um, forward movement attached to it. The central theme is the nine of wands. This is a card of setting boundaries and um, again, this is not, this is a card that's associated with fire energy being wands. So it's going to carry with it. I don't know if it's associated with a particular fire sign. The three fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sag. I don't know if it's connected to, um, a particular one. Um, but, um, setting boundaries can mean that you're no longer allowing other people to, treat you in a certain way or a specific person to treat you in that way. You're, you're making it very clear. It may also be if you have gotten, I was going to say gotten rid of a person that doesn't sound right, but if you have broken up with somebody like the King of Swords, um, you may have kind of like, what do they call that? It's, it's like rules. Um, as not rules of engagement, but you know what I mean? Just like in the future, you may uh, set some boundaries with a future partner that you are very um, solid uh, about because you may look back on this particular relationship if you have let go of it and or, or if that other person may have been the one who walked away. And you might say, um, these were red flags and I should have, um, been very adamant from day one. And the same applies in the workplace because you can have red flags in the workplace. If you, you know, for instance, I mentioned the chariot card, you know, could be some kind of success. Now, if you have some kind of, you do something on the job that is worthy of praise and you get nothing, you get just crickets that is a red flag that the person that you're working for has no in, has no intention of kind of like acknowledging you and giving you your due you know and that can make it very difficult to feel motivated because you know people like to be praised and especially leos and and that kind of creates a sense of uh, encouragement. I mean, that encouragement creates more of a desire to do, uh, good things for, um, you know, to, to achieve things, uh, when the person feels like they're getting, um, acknowledged for their talents and their efforts. Okay. So we're going to, um, I'm just going to pick up these three cards. So this might describe the theme for the next, for the, you know, from mid uh, November until late 
January. One of them is the Five of Pentacles. This is the card that's associated with um, poverty consciousness, sometimes unemployment or uh, money issues. And But it's also the card of maybe like over materialism and not enough um, spiritual, you know, kind of that imbalance between the spiritual and the material. And so you may have to change your attitude about money in order, I mean, what I mean by that is de-emphasize it in order to, um, if this is a work matter, in order to really take advantage of opportunities that come your way if you're getting a new job or you're starting your own business that you're going to be able to withstand maybe not making so much money at first and not feeling like something is wrong um, that you can envision yourself not working for another person because fixed signs tend to be very much um, what I would call scheduled um, that they like um, kind of a set uh, schedule and not have this uncertainty of getting paid, you know, whenever, however, having, you know, and these are for, for some people, if this is something that you have been wanting to do, starting a business, um, the five of pentacles can indicate that you may kind of like not believe that it, it can be possible. You're not, you might be worried about the money, if you're going to make enough money and things like that. And, you know, these are legitimate concerns, but by the same token, if you are overlooking the spiritual and just focus on the material, you'll forget that you can't take it with you. So it's, you know, money is, um, important functionally because this is how we get along in the universe and the, in the world, but it's, it has its limitations in terms of how it can really, um, ultimately impact us. I also got the full card, which indicates a whole new journey and that's, I always love this card in this kind of a position because it speaks about absolutely new beginnings. And yeah, I mean, you know, there's excitement for fire signs when they're um, ex having these adventures because uh, fire energy is expansive and adventures expand us, especially when we're not over scheduled when we're just willing to experiment with life and and see where it takes us and then i have the ace of pentacles so this is a practical new beginning the portal and um, this can be a new business that you start this can be a windfall of money that allows you to live a totally different life so um, I don't know if inheritances are associated with that. With the five of cups in the past position, perhaps there was some kind of inheritance issue that has been kind of put on hold or you're wondering about. And maybe that's what the king of swords rep represents for the past position, this judge's decision. Um, you know, sometimes the king of swords to me is a judge. I may have read that someplace. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did where the you know, a person who has to make a completely uh, unbiased decision and not allow emotion to get in the way whatsoever. They're just employing logic. Ace of Pentacles can be a new relationship too. And with the Fool card, it might be with somebody totally different. Actually, the Fool card connects with Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius which is your opposite sign. So there you go. Could that be? I don't know. You know, the nine of um, wands, uh, I was even thinking of a fellow fire sign. 
but you know, maybe this is somebody who is totally different than your typical, than your quote unquote type. And so you feel like you're really, um, kind of pushing it in a way because it's so different than what you're used to. Okay. That's what I have for you, Leo. I hope that you, uh, at least were entertained by this spiritual entertainment, I call it. And, um, if you'd like a private reading, you can check the link below for my offerings. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.